Hey, I just wanted to put in this quick little last minute parts list. Hopefully you could just screenshot these and cross them out as you're going along. And I'm not making this video to impress anybody. I'm just hoping that this is going to help somebody in their adventure and doing this as well. And this is obviously for the non-mechanics out there. But anyways, enjoy. Hey, hello, what up, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. So today we got the auto to manual swap. We're gonna start off with the parts list. We got the pedals right there with the clutch assembly. Um, we got the shift boot and the cluster. Flywheel and clutch plate. We have some clutch line brackets, the slave boot. So those are things you're gonna wanna, I guess, check off. You might not get them with your build. Um, this is the gear I'm using right here. So I'm picking this up with just the gear only um, so today we're going to start off with a the clutch line and so first we're just going to have to pop out this cutout right here it's going to be pre-cut so it should be an easy pop out there's going to be this ground material right here as well it's going to pop all those out and then next uh, install the exit -E clutch so this is the one i recommend going with it's going to come with the master and slave and then you should get the clutch line off of uh, the junkyard or a build so i'm doing this a little bit of the, the hard way i guess with the gear only um, so here's the the master and the it's ported upwards and then we're going to get into the pedal right here there's going to be a few bolts going into the firewall then one going straight up into the dash so you can link it up uh, once you're done with it you should be able to see so this right here is a quick tip people are usually pull I want to say people usually pull out the whole assembly you only really got to pull out the the pivot pin and unlatch that spring right there so that's all it is um, if you don't want to take out the whole assembly um, I'm not sure if that if you have to drop off the column or whatnot so I didn't have to do it with this so if you want to take this route go ahead and give it a shot it's super easy I kind of didn't really see a reason to do it the other way when I could have done it this way, so figured why not. Also, don't forget to adjust any links. Uh, make sure your brake lights aren't going off all the time. Um, but yeah, super easy. Didn't have to drop the column. And also, look up how to adjust your clutch link as well. Now, moving on to the, the gear right here. We got the speed sensor up top. You're going to have to wire that up later. Got the slave, the fork. Um, here's the clutch. I have another one already for this. Have to take out the axle. And then, yeah, so just know what you got, know what you don't. I'm missing a speed sensor here, but I do have the bolts for the linkage, uh, the roll pin, and the clip, and then also the stabilizer bar. So, mock up your clutch line. Make sure you got the right one. So first lose your clip. And then this is gonna be a little tip on how to get these guys out, or this pin out. Um, get a bolt the same size diameter and obviously get some pliers. So I'm in no way a mechanic, so. Um, I just want to show you guys that you guys could do this yourself. And this is going to be the same way for the installation as well once you're underneath the car. And I want to show that you're able to do this with just YouTube, I guess. So um, I gave it a shot and it worked out. So this is me uh, lining my the clutch line through the firewall. There's going to be a the pin right there that you're just going to put a the clutch line bracket onto. Your clutch line should come with a bracket if you pull it off of a, put it out the junkyard. Or off of where we're getting so that's the ground control cables right there so this is going to be an extra part to the the build this is the white manifold this is the automatic it has the airports you'd have to jb weld all these up if you went this route so first things first you're gonna have to take off the wheels and then i'm gonna start with draining the uh, the gear otherwise once you pull out that axle big mess so 
up to you if you just want to contain it now or clean it up later. It's up to you. And yeah, I'm just making this video to just show you guys, like, I guess how hard it can be um, and how simple it actually is. It's not too hard. I did have some troubles doing it, so know that you're going to do a lot more hammering than what I just did, and you're going to be beating the heck out of that. So I want this video to coincide with probably like four other videos that are main to this uh, swap. And I just want to give you the, the hit, hints and tips that they were kind of missing. If you do go this route, I'm going the harder route. Um, so I'm just taking off the upper control arm and kind of taking some bolts out of the lower control arm to pull out the strut just so I can get this axle out. But anyways, yeah, I am doing this the, the hardest way, I guess. Um, it's easier to just go grab a whole swap and probably use all those parts and just swap it out that way but for me i grabbed a gear for 100 bucks um, some of the other parts i mean i just went to the junkyard five bucks here ten bucks there um, just kind of realizing what i needed i think you know probably less than 300 bucks at the yard and i want to say what else did i spend Oh yeah, so there's I guess there's the the flywheel and clutch as well. So, so I'm just taking off the center console right here. There's a pin in the middle right here that holds the link, and that way you can get to the the bolts below, unhook the box, and then unhook whatever other linkage is down there as well. Now next you're gonna, now that you got the whole clutch line set up, the pedal should be in there. We're gonna start loosening up all the bolts, the starter, uh, the mounts. There's gonna be three plugs underneath the, the dizzy that you're gonna have to pull, just pull them straight out. Uh, some people get confused on this. Uh, and then also the plugs as well. We're gonna have to deal with a lot of plugs. So there's, there, there's gonna be about, I think two or three plugs left over on the this side of the, the harness. And then there's going to be one on the intake side that's extra that you're not going to use. I drilled four holes on the inside. So one right here, one right here, one on the inside, and one on the inside. Pretty much where the pinch welds were at, uh, as far as in the corners as I can get. And yeah, then I just got this... Uh, air compressor cutter but so this is going to be a specialty tool this will make it a lot easier for you um took me maybe uh 15 minutes to do all this all and then i'll probably get to punch it out i think this goes up and down but small little blade i just drove around the whole center one on the other side of the car did it from that angle got a different angle all right, so I'm doing a quick little magnet sweep. Get all the shards out so it's not bouncing back up when I'm beating the cup out. And this did take a little bit longer than I expected or I had to really beat on it more than I expected. You might be able to take a heat gun to it and pound it out. I don't know, I didn't go that route, so. That's the red polyurethane you guys see right there. That's for the shift linkage. And I ended up using random hardware for this as well. So I'll just see what fits and then drill accordingly. I'll get more into it later. Now onto the Y7 and Y8 conversion. You're gonna have to drain the coolant system. Also, I am working around the fuel system. So you won't have to change anything on that. You should be able to keep the Y7 rail and injectors. Yeah, all this I kind of learned off of YouTube. So if I could do it, you could do it too. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, you are going to need a burping uh, funnel kit. That'll help a lot. All right, so I'm now getting rid of the Y7 manifold. Just throwing this out to the dogs. And I did drop 
the gear the batteries just died out i wasn't able to record it for you guys so sorry um, just hook everything and pull it out it's pretty simple um, so you are gonna have to extend these two hoses. i believe one's a quarter and one's a three eight so there's a pcv valve swap the valve out as well since you're down here extend the hose i want to say maybe two two and a half feet each shouldn't shouldn't need that much and while you're down here clean some of it up um, whatever you can i'm gonna be swapped this so i'm probably not gonna do much but this is uh, where we're going to have to extend any wires. You're going to have to do some mocking up. Pretty much there's going to be tape. And then you're going to have some skin to unwrap. So wherever you have to do it, do it accordingly. I did as little as I can. Um, but just kind of work with what you have. You are going to end up with one extra air harness or air intake harness on the side. Um, so don't worry about that. But everything else should plug up and it is fitted accordingly. It's going to take some time. There's going to be a little a bunch of little tape pieces everywhere, but this is what you're going to have to do. Now, this is the Y8 manifold, the manual one. It doesn't have that top port, which you would have to cut off or plug, plus the four ports you'd have to plug. People usually JB weld them. So, again, I'm still working around the fuel system, so still be careful again. Do this at your own risk. So, I'm going to mock this up without the gasket. And then tidy everything down, get all the wires kind of where they should be, and then we can move on from there. You're going to need to pick up these ARP flywheel bolts. Here's a little visual for the differences. And I'll actually give you guys a visual on the flywheel. It doesn't even go past the plate pretty much. So. That's what you're dealing with. And this is the Exidy clutch kit. I want to say this should come with the alignment tool and the throw out bearing if I'm not mistaken. So cleaning up all the bolts, I'm using blue Loctite with this. And don't forget to put your pilot bearing in the flywheel beforehand. I think I forgot to record that. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have all your torques um, specced out. Just have everything recorded on a piece of paper or whatever, notebook piece. Um, have everything ready. Torque everything in a star pattern. The flywheel, the clutch. The clutch you're gonna to have to throw on the, I wanna say there's two dowel pins, and then you kind of beat that on and then put in the bolts. So the, there's the ARP flywheel bolts you're gonna have to get, and then these clutch bolts. I'll, I pulled these out of my warehouse. But you can look these up online. They just have to be shouldered right here or flanged. So now we got the the fork hooked up, the new master, the new throwout bearing. There's a spring that I forgot to mention on the parts list for the throwout fork. But we have everything set up, even a new rubber nipple on top or thimble, whatever that is. Got it all set up. Got to go on, making sure we have everything done on this side. And then we have everything all set up, the clutch line set up. Clutch alignment tool slides out real easy. Everything is good to go. So here's a quick view of the color code on the TPS and map wires, uh, just in case you get these mixed up. And you're also gonna not, uh, I guess, keep this purge valve right here. You're not gonna wanna let that go. I actually ended up having to swap one of these after the whole conversion. So I did try to do this little wooden platform deal. Um, I'd recommend again, but just don't even try it. 
So be careful doing this. I did pull my back. Um, kind of working by myself, but the red jack stand right there, I should have been a, a scissor jack. And it was just a little bit too low and I was getting hung up on the cross member and I was just not with the shits. Don't forget your stretches. I got the tranny in. It was a bitch and a half for me. Um, a lot of people probably aren't going to run into this. And there's also some things I could have done that would have made it easier. I mean, if I would have done this, it would have made it a whole lot easier. And also, there's not really too much information on how to raise the tranny and insert it they kind of just say jack it up and go um, for a first time builder uh, it was a pain in the ass these two top screws for me um, they were clogged in the back of the threading so I had to chase them with the threader but that was after I had installed it twice already and then for the third time I gave it one last go and I look, uh, fortunately I was able to get it on and also the back T bracket over here was hanging me up a good amount um, it's very movable <clears throat> I still got to hook up the pipe and stuff but my main thing is to get the tranny on I got the linkage going so got that in was barely able to hook in those nuts I haven't put a plate over this yet. I might wait a while to do that. I did paint it just to prevent rust, but oh, this is still on here. There is two punch outs right here that you guys could drill through. I templated <clears throat> the um, bushing and I held it to this point and it seemed more true to these holes than it would to these holes. Um, so I went ahead and I used it as a jig, the bushing itself. I used it as a jig or a template to uh, um, to drill down into. So I started a little pilot on both of them and then took off the, the jig and pretty much followed through with it. And then I used a step. I might have it in here. Oh, I guess not. I used a uh, step bit and then just pretty much blew them open until the bolt was able to fit in so luckily um, again after I drilled them both open grabbed the bushing and made sure that I did seat right kind of flattened it out um, just to make sure that everything did go right and it seemed like it was working well and it seemed to, to work so um, <clears throat> yeah and I want to say this is in now you could it's neutral and First, yeah, I need to still pressurize that. I do have to put the pins in the clutch pedals. I think I need to put the pins in, um, I want to say the brake pedal as well. Uh, still have to do the wiring. Um, that's all the stuff we can do once the car's on the ground. That's one of the main things I want to do is get the car back on the ground. I don't like it um, out here in the parking lot on jacks. Um, if I haven't mentioned, this is my original odometer, uh, and then I uh, Created with the uh, RPMs. The dust plate and the guard are different for the manual, so um, I'll take a couple pictures. I'll try to insert them here pretty soon. But yeah, make sure if you do do this, get the hardware, the guard. Uh, I got lucky at the yard and these were already taken off from someone previous and these two bolts were left in here these 14s and I just reused my 12s and found some other bolts for the for the guard but everything kind of worked out it was a little bent out of shape but it works um, there is the bushing and I got the pin and the clip inside there if I well, all in all uh, with no experience this is not too bad of a, a process.
We do have um, smoke out here right now. I want to say it's coming from Oregon. Uh, Oregon wildfires. But yeah, another perk of uh, me doing this at the time I'm doing it. So, look at me. This transmission speed sensor, um, that's off a of manual. Um, they do have one on a automatic. I'm not gonna test it to see if it's the same. Uh, the plugs do look the same. But as far as the contraption, I'm not 100% sure. <coughs> All I gotta do is slap in the starter and wire it up, ground it clutch line and then the transmission should be installed for the most part and then I gotta pressurize the clutch line but uh, after that just put a pin in the clutch pedal and adjust it and onto the manifold and that should be it for this and we can fire her up it should come out looking like this for the most part make sure everything is where it should be Top off the coolant, top off the gear oil, make sure you do those fluids properly. You are gonna end up with a few harnesses over here on this side and end up with an extra plug back here. Um, I believe this is one of the air plugs. I wanna say this is obsolete at this point we do have the other one going into the intake i don't know how much i like these cables dragging around their bracket will clip all these back into place um i looped with the piping that was right here um, the coolant hose Tranny. But anyways, uh, yeah, big shout out to uh, Mr. Moore at the Texas Honda channel. This is all ran over by him. So this is what this build was based off of. Uh, I didn't feel confident until I could watch that video. So, you know, big shout out to homeboy. But I'll redo the manifold and then secure it down. Put the new fresh gasket, I think it's right there. Slap it on and uh, turn it over. But I guess that'll be a minute for you guys, or a second, and a minute for me. So there you go. Those are my two readings. Uh, one's for the clutch pressure line, and it's the bottom one. The top one is the torque converter is not being sensed so hopefully i can start it without these two Alright, well that sucked. It turned out to be a bunk ass gear. I ended up having to get a new one. But if you're just doing the auto to manual conversion, then this is probably the spot where you're going to want to take off. I don't think there's much else for you to watch unless you just want to watch the content. I appreciate that. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching. Um, the rest of the video is going to be me figuring this out and kind of what I had to do. I ended up just getting a new gear. But then I also kind of show you guys how to tame the Y7 to Y manifold conversion. Uh, I see a lot of people go through this and have a lot of trouble, so I'm going to show you what I did to fix it. Hopefully this could help you, so just keep watching and stay tuned. The input shaft bearing seems to be out. Uh, the car starts, everything's good. Uh, I'm still getting check engine lights. I'll have to check what that's about. Um, I guess I'll give you guys a 
demonstration of what it sounds like. But anyways, this is pretty much going to be a video of how fast I could uninstall because I don't think I'm going to reinstall it anytime today. So I'm just going to pull it out, work on it. I'm going to try and fix that bearing, replace the seal on it. I don't want to go too deep into it. Um, if I have to, I'll go source out another tranny off the marketplace or something. This is right here, this little replica in my shift knob. I was looking everywhere for this, couldn't find it. Now finally I could uh, have something to hold. But, oh. So, this is what I'm working on. I mean, this is what it looks like. I'll show you guys what it looks like after. And this is how gross it is. Anyways. All right, yeah, so for this, you honestly really just need the underclip, so if you don't know. So you're just gonna need this clip right here, and you could you could honestly use it from an automatic as well. It's the same case or housing or whatever. So I'm just cutting up the tin right here for the cover plate. Just enough to cover that uh, the shift canal hole. I don't show the insulation on this. All I did was drill two holes and use insulation tape and the pinch weld holes to hook everything together. I was curious if I left oil in the engine, if there would be any spillage. Okay, moving on to the gear now. So here's the bearing I want to say they send you. This is the one you need right here, the 6205 one. It's going to have this SS marking up top. That's the one you're going to want to go for. I think I went through like three different bearings. Um, I just kept having to return them is what it was, but apparently nobody sells them and they're pretty hard to come across for some reason uh, I searched the web deep and far and I just couldn't find nothing on them but honestly all this was kind of a waste of time so here's a comparison between the two what I pulled out and then what I ordered which took me a long time to get but um, they honestly didn't sound too far off from each other um, so this could have not been the issue honestly it still had the, a bad bearing in it once I started it over again, so. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, it would just be easier to just go get a new gear. Um, I did this so you didn't have to. But I did get a good experience out of this. I learned how to take apart a uh, gear and put it back together, so. It was running when I got done with it. Alright, and the high idle was, uh, I guess, one of the issues, along with the bad bearing. So, 
This is the new gear. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a clean real quick. It sounds a lot better than what the, I guess, original one I had was. So this was the comparison in the shaft plates. It was kind of minor, so if you don't know what you're looking for, it might be hard. So that first one you heard was pretty crunchy. This one's a little bit smoother. Where we're at, um, this is tranny number three for, I guess, entirely the salt conversion. Only two of them were installed. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a bearing inside the last tranny. I changed the input shaft bearing, but I'm pretty sure it was one of those other bearings in there that were going out, or even all of them went out. Um, those sounded pretty gnarly, so this is a startup for this tranny. Um, it seems pretty good. There's a big difference in the shaft sound, so um, we're gonna see how this one sounds right now. So I was having to check engine light for the longest time and it was frustrating me because um, so this is another thing too that was only with what I'm doing with right now it wasn't really with the auto to manual swap is the Y7 to Y8 uh, intake conversion um, that was giving me some issues but honestly I don't even think it was that even if I would have I want to say swapped it. It was a bad ECU, so that's what it was. It was a, ooh, it was a bad ECU. That was, that was some bullshit. Check engine line goes away. I do got to put a quart of oil in here, but that's always on. Same with the batteries. And no foot on the brake, no nothing, just key turn only. <laughs> That'll go down soon too, it's just warming up, so. Um, let me try to. Uh, I guess you guys can see some of the other goodies that I put in right here too. Uh, uh, she definitely sounds way better. This is what she should sound like. But I have this plug in the back with two separate hoses and I plugged up those hoses separately. So I did loop them one time and it didn't work out. I think that was for something else. You maybe could loop it and it'll still probably do the same thing or just played it off. Um, I just did that. Yeah, no, that was the ECU that did it. Um, I did convert the, the throttle pulley right here. I want to say I did do the conversion on that as well, so that's something you have to do. But the main thing, which fix everything, is adjusting this right here. The auto control valve, I want to say it is. I did about a half turn. Well, I tweaked it up just a slight bit, so it's at the corner of this divot. So I made that a marking point. Um, it was just past it, so I went up and then turned this way, another half turn back, and then slightly slim down some more. It might be different for you, so maybe just do one half turn, see what happens. Um, but this is what fixed it for me after I adjusted that money. Maybe put a quart of oil if it's already low. I don't want to run it too hard. I'm just going to go to the store real quick. And put some oil in it. And the quarter so I didn't realize I was up. So again, hit that like button and uh, subscribe and all that.
and then I'll make a, a, a post video of whatever else I have going on with this. I don't know if you guys can tell. I mean, you guys can already see what we got going on right there. So, did that, and a couple other things. It's honestly not too exciting. Maybe a minute or two with the content, but um, that's what I have for now. Uh, let's go on this drive, and I'll show you what she's uh, pulling like. Door planted. I'm gonna get some oil right now. I'll be back. <clears throat> All right, we got a new quart of oil in. check engine light but yeah I do got uh, I do got plans for this I guess but as far as the learning aspect this definitely was a good one hopefully I'll break this soon and that'll give me some more motivation to hop on the B series but I do want to get that build it right put it on a stand and whatnot uh, hopefully I don't get no more issues with this build in the meantime I think this is it for the video and then here's my light. Until next time, man. Um, so when I did first did the YA conversion, the intake manifold conversion, um, it kept dropping down too low and seemed like it was wanting to die out. And I think it did die out a couple times on me. So I opened it up some more. helped it I mean I twisted a little bit let it run for a minute twisted a little bit let it run for a minute I think I had to put it in a maintenance mode as well so make sure you do that did I do that for that I want to say I did that for that if I'm not mistaken uh, double check on that 